Hello, welcome to Diving Under the Blue Huron Bridge in West Palm Beach, Florida with Jeff Bixby and crew. It's three of us diving. We've got a guide, Phil, and Anne, my sister. We're looking at fishies right now. And up ahead is a buoy chain with a couple of fish. I'm not sure they're species, but they seem to be trying to chew the coral and various other stuff off the chain. So, let me see like zebra looking fish up ahead. And yes, I don't have a bloody clue what any of them are named. But as you can see, they're just sitting there chewing the crap out of this chain, whatever they're doing. Nom nom. And there are some swimmers in the background, a little bit of coral. I just have to say, I really love the green and red on that fish. And then, of course, the zebra fish running around. Kind of a yellow in between their black stripes. And then other little kinds of fish and how they school. They also had a tendency to all kind of go into the current in the same line. It was pretty cool. <laughs> More swimmers. Snorkelers, I think. And then, of course, this what looks like natural coral. We'll come on some stuff later on that looks a little less natural. Uh, some blue fish there. Might be a dory. Uh, some other kinds. Pretty green one. And then a blue and yellow one. And then that weird one with the black and white stripe. And those were sponges on top of that uh, coral there. Some kind of red coral. And there's our guide. He's wearing a red shirt so we can see him. Unfortunately, it's a Patriot shirt. I guess we'll forgive him for now. He is a Bostonian, so he can't really help himself. There's some more coral growing on what looks like a net or rope. And then there were these little fish with odd shapes. It might have been a small species of puffer fish. And you'll have to excuse me, I'm a bit of an amateur. Well, a bit is understating it. And, uh, I'll be looking at random stuff at points. I had to do a lot of rough cuts because there was a lot of times I dropped the camera off the side and it was just kind of dragging. And this structure, I don't know if it's natural or man-made. It's strange. It's a... Uh, you can see all the coral and the fish going in and out. It almost looks like some kind of layered structure that uh, man built and then just got covered with coral. All kinds of odd sponges and, and these some of these bigger fish that are just around. Hanging out, nibbling on things. Hooray! And you can actually see through this thing. You're not seeing it in this picture here, but you can actually kind of look through it, which makes me more and more think it's man-made and somehow just crap got built up around it. Tiny little thing there. And of course you get the, rad or, uh, the random detritus just floating in the water as you swim around. A lot of that's different kinds of life and things that are being fed on by the filter feeders. It's very interesting. A lot of fun. There's a yellow fish there. Oh, there's Phil again. And there's my sister giving me the double OK sign. Because we're all okay. With our blue tanks, which are supposed to be Cubs related. Really need to put a uh, bumper sticker on them with Cubs. Uh, a little cut there because I dropped the camera again. More 
fishies. A little bit of the bottom, which is a bit boring. And here we're coming up on a powerboat wreck. Now, it doesn't look um, like it was a violent wreck. I'm, I'm thinking this boat sank, it was just kind of abandoned and just kind of sank at some point and no one felt like covering it. Generally, you see an artificial reef, you don't see the motor still on it. Um, seen a few in like diving parks and this one looks more like it's actually a wreck but not a violent one it's not like broken up or twisted a bunch of yellow fish and the different kinds of zebra fish and little other ones and then just the life on this boat is just uh, a little bit more interesting than some of the other things we looked at. Yellow fish and black fish. Again, if I knew the species, it would probably be a lot more interesting. And there's our guide again, my sister. There's a dory-ish fish, and there's a piece of a tail from a lobster, and we, I think I may have found another lobster earlier, we didn't capture it in camera, it was definitely dead and some other fish are feeding on it, that one's a piece of a lobster. Not the only uh, dead thing we found. And then there's this one kind of fish that was kind of swimming on its side. We'll get a little more of that in a minute. We're getting okays. And moving towards the bridge. This is all in uh, pretty shallow water. We maxed out at 21 feet and averaged about 9 good portion I cut out of this dive was actually like five feet which was really boring but uh, oh yeah we got this big old fish this one was swimming straight up there's another similar variety that was swimming kinda on its side we'll get to that in a little bit oh yeah this little puffer right here I only got a short bit of it And then there's a camera guy and a camera woman. And I'm trying to remember, I think, ah, there it is. And you can see it a little closer, this fish that was swimming on its side. Now, which you might not notice, and we're going to see it. There it is, right under its tail, is like a flounder or a halibut, some kind of flatfish, with the two eyeballs right on top of its head. And then this one, this other fish that was kind of swimming on its side. Now, there goes Phil. He's going to go push the flatfish, but I didn't catch it on camera. And there's this guy. And then I had a bit of camera envy. Not actually with this woman who's got this incredibly huge rig, but that guy with a slightly more usable camera. My camera is a little cheapo one I got off of Amazon. But it works. Uh, there's another one of those little puffer fish. Kind of ended up being a quick one. Oh, this crab was so cool running around with a conch shell. We only got a second of it because I was having trouble with my camera. <laughs> it just looks so cool with like knuckles. Like it was walking like an ape. And we saw a bunch of sponges. Here we're going to start under the bridge. And 
it, it looks pretty dark on camera, and it was definitely darker under the bridge, but it wasn't, like, super dark ever at all. The camera just makes it look worse. This actually was on the other side of the bridge, but this is a little out of order, but it's this really cool ray. And this other kind of fish, I think it might have been a rasp. And just all kinds of fish under the bridge and sponges and coral, but mostly sponges. Most of those are some kind of sponge. Very cool, actually. Different divers, and that's why our guide was wearing a red shirt. Apparently went diving with my father and sister without me on another day, because I, I, I had something else to do, but <laughs> he said he was going to wear his red shirt, and he forgot. Oh well. <laughs> they survived. Darn it. <laughs> kidding, kidding. Anyway, bunch of fish right over there. Um, they were all just hanging out around some concrete structure. I don't know what it was. I dropped the camera for a bit there, and then I picked it back up and just looking I think it might have been piers for an old version of the bridge I uh, drove over the bridge I mean it looks pretty nice and relatively new so I could believe they replaced an older bridge at some point a whole bunch of the zebra fish and various fish with some kind of dot in the back and oh and there's the captain of our boat coming down showing off his mad snorkeling skills <laughs> show off anyway there's the uh, fish with a dot in their tail I have to think that's some kind of survival thing to avoid predators we came out on the other side and that's actually where we, we ended up seeing the ray I thought Phil was pointing at something there, but he wasn't. We swam around a little bit. We saw this weird caterpillar thing, and then these jellyfish. Uh, found a couple of these. Pretty. Dangerous, but pretty. Oh, and this big starfish. They saw it again the next day, but... Wow. Just huge. And then there's these remains of a sailboat of some kind. Um, it's in pretty bad shape. We headed back under the bridge with current behind us, so we were moving kind of fast. Not having to work at all. I was just drifting at that point. And other divers. It's very cool. Very crowded area. I uh, hear it gets even worse on the weekends. I mean, it is a shore dive area, so you can just park and walk off. So it's relatively cheap to to go and do. It's it's pretty. Um, you can only go during the high tides, apparently. So I'd I'd go during the high tides if you were if you're able to go. And there's another flatfish of some kind. Looks just like the rocks. Well, there's, I think that's a puffer fish. I'm not absolutely certain. There are all these fish that would all kind of swim in schools right into the current. The current was starting to pick up at this point. And, and this was at the end of a large portion we were diving a little too shallow and I found the school just hanging out just kind of going with the current or against the current all in line oh that barracuda yeah I had chased him for just a little bit but I didn't want to get too far away from my group and then we found this fish head something was munching all right here's some more of those fish that were all schooled together a little fast guys just swimming into the current. And then one last trip past the original uh, sets of coral. A couple of big zebra fish. And a slight change in the fish that were around this one. 
don't know if on this pass you can really see through the uh, the structure, whatever it is. There's that big guy over on the other side. Yeah, you see, you can see through it. No, oh, and I think that's a tiny puffer fish. I could be wrong though. Back up against this last little bit of coral. And this is about the time I end the video. Sorry for all the shortcuts. I kind of dropped the camera a few times. But we returned to our boat. Great time.